Welcome back. Today we complete our study on the Church of Smyrna, uh, the second church of the seven churches in the Asia Minor. And just to recap on the scripture there. Welcome back. Today we complete our study on the Church of Smyrna, uh, the second church of the seven churches in the Asia Minor. And just to recap on the scripture there. Write this letter to the angel of, of the church in Smyrna. This is the message from the one who is the first and last, who was dead but is now alive. I know about your suffering and your poverty, but you are rich. I know the blasphemy of those opposing you. They say they are Jews, but they're not, because their synagogue belongs to Satan. Don't be afraid about what you are about to suffer. The devil will throw some of you into prison to test you. You will suffer for 10 days. But if you remain faithful, even when facing death, I will give you. So this is in absolute harmony with what we had spoken before. We'd said that Smyrna is the church where a sacrifice is called for, where we might go through some tribulation or suffering and even unto death, death of self, even physical death for, for death for some people, but mostly that we will die to self to live in Christ. So Paul wrote to the Corinthians, therefore we do not lose heart, but though our outer man is decaying, dying, decaying, yet our inner, inner man is being renewed day by day. For our momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory far beyond all comparison. You can't put it better than that. Paul was brilliant. Ultimately, it's capped. In terms of saying that it will be, it'll feel like 10 days only. For such tribulation and under such accusation and oppression due to the law or humanism being imposed upon us, a double portion of grace is required for us. Five times two in symbolical terms, one of the aspects of the 10 days. We need a double portion of grace to see us through all of what we need to go through to die to self, to die to the world, and to live in Christ eternally. But 10 is also used as a hyperbole. Three times in the Torah, the law was encapsulated in the 10 commandments or the 10 words. No matter how we tried and tested in the furnace of affliction, we must remain faithful unto death. As Paul recognized, we are afflicted in every way, but not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. We might even be struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be made manifest in our bodies. Wow, awesome. Don't lose heart, just be faithful and you'll be crowned in honor with a victor, victor's crown by Jesus. So don't fear what you're about to suffer. And this is to you who's listening now. Behold, the devil can cast some of us into prison in inverted commas so that we will be tested and we will have tribulation for 10 days. But if we remain faithful, the crown of life will be ours. The Judaizers will be working with the devil in his schemes to try and imprison us or other Christians. The word for prison here, fulaki, is symbolic for losing the ability to do things freely. When you're put under guard, when you lose your voice or your standing or your ability to represent Jesus effectively in your community. It might even mean being marginalized or banished mentally or spiritually or even physically. If this is where the enemy will try to limit you in terms of constraining you to live freely in the grace and abundance of Christ and trying to keep that control through guilt and condemnation. The accuser will try to attack your, your ident identity and calling in Christ and he'll use people to do so very effectively. It's not just the demons themselves that will attack us. He'll use even people in church to do that. That's why these people in Smyrna were addressed. Whatever people say about you, good or bad, must measure up with what God says about you. 
Anything less or more must never influence you. The subtle power of spiritual abuse by leaders in the church will also put some people in prison, taking away their freedom. For instance, enforcing them to tithe or the foods that they can eat or trying to get them to keep some feasts or their dress sense or even enforce a way of worship that's not free in Holy Spirit. They, they'll do so by imposing guilt or by manipulation or intimidation or controlling people. They take fundamentalist approaches on peripheral issues, for instance, creationism or end time theologies or things that are really not that important. They'll teach a law grace mixed message and they will definitely try and impose some humanist ideologies to name but a few. So the 10 days refer to that sense, feeling that it's a short term of imprisonment. Why? Because we have a promise. <laughs> the anointing opens prison doors, just as Isaiah promised and Jesus said and declared that these words were fulfilled in your ears today. So when we then realize, but actually the enemy does not have a hold over us, then those 10 days are over. We've passed the test. And now we can walk into the victorious crown of life that he's given us. So how do we deal with that? Stay close to Jesus and don't give Holy Spirit any reason to tangibly withdraw from you. Don't grieve him and don't quench him. John said that we should overcome the evil one as young men. For greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Death and particularly spiritual death can only corrode our faith when we choose to believe and follow the deception of the enemy of the world and of, of spiritual leaders that are influenced by them too. We are called to rejoice evermore, to pray without ceasing and to be thankful in all things. No prison can hold you once God's anointings come into your life. Jesus came to open prison doors and to set us as captives free. He took to captives captive so that we are captivated by him hallelujah so spiritually the devil can't touch you really so when the church comes in line with the truth the Lord will speedily crush the enemy underneath our field our feet the old you no longer live but you've died in Christ and you now live evermore in him for us death means death to self death to the enemy death to the world and the result the crown, the celebration and authority of being alive in Him and with Him now, every day and forever. How beautiful. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And he who overcomes will not be hurt by the second death. That time when we have to face our Almighty God on the final day. The message is for all who will hear this message and take it to heart. So listen carefully and you'll learn more about Jesus and his role in Father God's eternal plan. Smyrna, Smyrna represents God's call for us to die, to self, to make the sacrifices necessary, to, to sever ourselves from the world, from the enemy, and from all those who are under their influence. For us to realize that our true freedom lies in Jesus, our beginning and our end. No matter what the enemy throws at us, we must faithfully keep our eyes on Jesus and walk on the waters of adversity as we face this world, as we still live as sojourners and pilgrims on this earth. And then we'll start to taste the powers and authority of the world to come to a great measure as we die to self and live for Him. We live never to die again. Every part of that death of the old person won't hurt us because it will bring forth the fresh fragrance of being a new creation in Him. We must be willing to be martyred for our testimony in Jesus, both literally and spiritually. And we take our stand and make our testimony of this truth. And we endeavor to enter into His rest, never to be caught trying to serve the law and trying to be self-righteous, but give Jesus all the glory and pursue holiness because we've already been made righteous in Him. So let us pray. Almighty God and Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus Christ, 
Holy Spirit, help me to hear what you want to say to me. Help me to overcome by dying gracefully to self, to the world and to the enemy and to live for you alone. In Jesus' wonderful name.